Well, we are back with Billy Macklow. He's the head of William Macklow and Company, company talking about, of course, uh, real estate. And, uh, you know, Billy, one of the things I was thinking about, um, you know, as I was doing this research for this interview was um, no matter what, you know, even as you're breaking out on your own, you're starting your new firm, people are still going to remember you, though, with your days with your father. And they're going to remember about, you know, the 2008 property bust and having to sell the GM building and, and all of that and selling it to Mort Zuckerman. Uh, how do you or do you feel you even need to overcome that image as you go out on your own? Or, you know, how do you sort of play that then? You know, I think it, it, it's an interesting question, Betty. And, you know, during that period of time, uh, there was there was obviously a lot of focus on us. Um, you know, fairly or unfairly as sort of, you know. Well, you said it's been unfair, though, right? I mean, everyone kind of said. The Maclows are the are, are the are the poster child of what went wrong in the property market. Well, we, bought, we bought a portfolio of buildings, um, you know, with, with short-term financing, one-year financing. Which certainly one lesson we're, we're absolutely going to take away from this is no short-term financing. Mm -hmm. But if you really look at the overall load on that purchase at thousand dollars a foot before you know associated fees and costs, you know that kind of ranks right now. Getting back to Zuckerman, where he just purchased 510 Madison Avenue, a vacant office building, at nine hundred plus dollars a foot. So when that building is leased up and stabilized, he's looking at well north of a thousand dollars a foot on a basis for probably a yield in the, in the five range. Mm -hmm. So from a value proposition, our thesis wasn't necessarily wrong. We were just, you know, on, on the short side of leverage, and that's, right. that's unfortunate. And if you look at other, what I would call kind of stories in the real estate world from, you know, the, the extreme dislocation of the capital markets, you know, we're just one of them. You have GGP, you have Stytown, there are all sorts of Centro, Mills, all sorts of other companies. I think we were one of the few companies that, you know, we never, we never, we never filed. Uh, we didn't you never have, filed for bankruptcy. No, right. we, ne we never, we never had litigation. You paid your creditors. We paid our creditors and we were able to work through our problems, you know, and, and the Kablin with integrity. So, you know, we sold some buildings, we did that, I think, along the way there were achievements. Mm -hmm. It was a very pressured situation. We were obviously, you know, probably one of the weakest sellers, you know, the most defensive sellers in a very difficult time. However, given the quality of our assets and sort of the legacy of how we run our business and what the forward-looking projections on those buildings were, we were able to at least create enough competitive tension right. to drive price. So no, uh, no short-term financing is one lesson. Absolutely. What else did you learn from this? I think the amount, you know, real estate's a great game, certainly quality assets. You know, our portfolio over the years, we had slowly sort of deaccessioned several buildings to focus our concentration of investment mm -hmm. in the Grand Central and Plaza District submarkets, okay. which are historically and will remain the best submarkets in the Manhattan office market. Um, I think you want to own the best. You want to have appropriate leverage. I mean, real estate is an illiquid vehicle, and it does require and, a certain and, amount and of leverage. And we did we did get into over leverage no uh, question. during this during this time. Uh, no question, I would think that selling the GM building was perhaps one of the most painful moments in this. I think it's 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 um, you know it was a way to dig out of out of, dig out of our situation. And, uh, but it was a, hard to let go, right? It's hard to let go. I think in business, I try not to be emotional about it. One, one has to, you know, see the end game because it is, it is a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, it was unfortunate. It's a great asset. I think BXP will do very well with it in the long term. And uh, you know, it's nice to know that we had a, a hand in, in bringing that building back to its, its luster and glory. Now, fortunate or unfortunate, I mean, you know, what happened in 2008 really focused not just on the Macla Properties Group, but also just on your relationship with your father. Um, fairly or unfairly, you know, there's been a lot of press saying that, uh, you know, that the relationship has now been acrimonious between the two of you. I mean, is it? No, I don't think that's a fair characterization. I think if you really look at the articles over that period of time, uh, we were non-participatory with the press. So I think it, it only becomes a better it story. Just it. Yeah, I think the press is just trying to make it a little more tabloid esque than just a pure financial play. You know, my dad's been a great partner of mine for a long time. I've been a great student of his. I worked for him and then at a point I started working with him. Mm -hmm. And you know, he had the opportunity to start his business uh, from the ground up and, and now it's my and turn to do to. that. So I think looking forward in the market and sort of given his age and given my age, it's just a different a different forward look. And right. that, that's kind of where we are. And are you seeking his advice or? Oh, I've had 40 years of his advice. <laughs> so I think. It's time to break out. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. Billy, thank you so much. I really appreciate you thank stopping you, by. My pleasure. Uh, Billy Macklow of William Macklow and Company.